On today's show, the Medicine Hat Tigers showcase why they're one of the best teams in the CHL. A former OHL referee who's also one of Canada's top golfers, and a look at more Canadian Hockey League alumni playing in the NHL. Hello CHL fans, I'm Sam Cosentino and this is the CHL. Back when I was calling Blue Jays games in the summer and CHL games in the winter, I was convinced I had the best gig in sports. Garrett Rank might be right there. He refs in the winter and golfs competitively in the summer. What do Ryan Johansson, Nick Foligno and Jakob Voracek all have in common? Stay tuned. We'll also take you back to the 2007 MasterCard Memorial Cup Final between Medicine Hat and Vancouver. But first, we take a look at the current edition of the Tigers on game day against Kelowna. Somewhere along that ribbon of pavement known as the Trans-Canada Highway, in a place where pasture land stretches as far as the eye can see, where the horizon is met by a big sky of blue, sits one of Canada's most uniquely named cities, Medicine Hat. It's the home of the Western Hockey League's Medicine Hat Tigers, two-time Memorial Cup champions, five-time WHL champions, and the junior club of one of the greatest NHLers to ever lace his skates, Lanny McDonald. Some argue that it's the large reserve of natural gas that keeps this city's engine running, but the reality is that the game of hockey is what keeps its heart pumping. It's the Tiger's lore that brings teenagers from all over Western Canada here with the dream of winning a Memorial Cup. It's the love for the team that draws sellout after sellout to its tiny arena. And it's the great game of hockey that brings the community together. This is Tiger Country. 16-year-old defenseman David Quenville is in his first season with the Medicine Hat Tigers. Yeah, I knew uh, there was a winning team here and uh, a lot of history. Uh, the Friday night game is, you know, it's the Tigers game, so everyone's going to that, which is always an exciting thing, uh, being on the team. I don't, I don't know where I'd be uh, without hockey. Uh, it's my everyday, you know, moving away from home at 16 uh, to go play and, you know, living the dream as a 16-year-old kid playing in uh, one of the best junior leagues in the world. Um, you know, and I miss family and friends every day, but uh, I love it and uh, I wouldn't change for anything in the world. Moving away from home for hockey isn't new to him or his family, as his two older brothers, John and Peter, both play for the Brandon Wheat Kings. Peter and John, you know, they always wanted to be hockey players, and having Peter go the college route and, and John go the dub route, I kind of got to see both uh, ends of the spectrum, and now they're both in the dub, so it's nice to kind of know what it took to get there. And I think it was a little bit easier knowing uh, having both brothers uh, gone through it and, you know, what to expect and, and what to kind of do about it to. Know, kind of ease the situation, but it helped a lot having both brothers and Brandon. Uh, if there's anything I could uh, needed or needed to call them about, I'd call them, and, and that would kind of settle things. And it's really helped me a lot being here at 16, and it helps having a great billet family uh, smoothie into things. So everything's been uh, awesome so far. Quenville is off to school for a morning of classes before heading to the arena to prepare for tonight's game against Kelowna. Just north of Medicine Hat is CFB Suffield, the largest military training base in the Commonwealth. However, the base is used primarily by British Armed Forces for live fire training. These British soldiers come to Canada to train for war, but at the same time, they fall in love with hockey. I'm Lizzie, Lizzie from Liverpool in the United Kingdom. Um, I'm in the British Army, been in the Army for 17 years now. Uh, lucky enough to come out here twice, and that's where we it's where I found the, the sport of hockey. Look at it behind us, you know what I mean? Everyone's out, we've got Canadians, we've got Brits out there. It's just one of them sports that you want to get out and just play. The game builds camaraderie throughout the community. This arena is actually the hub of the community. In the wintertime, everything revolves around the arena. So it's, it's part of your life, it's part of your lifestyle. This is what keeps the community going, is, is everything that happens here in the rink, and that's why out of say 100%, there's probably 85 to 90% of the people that are here play hockey. The newcomers become passionate about hockey, and the Medicine Hat Tigers do everything they can to support that love affair at the base. Well, the Medicine Hat Tigers have been coming out here 
to skate and play shinny with uh, military members and their families for 21 years. So we've seen guys like Chris Russell, Joffrey Lupo, Tyler Ennis, uh, David Schlemko, all guys that have been in the NHL have been coming here for you know two or three years while they're with the Tigers because they come every year. Back at Medicine Hat Arena, two of the team's veteran stars finish up morning exercises before tonight's game. Trevor Cox is one of the WHL's leading scorers and playing in his fourth season in the WHL. Yeah, the WHL, uh, CHL in general is probably the best junior hockey league in the world. And, and uh, it's exciting every night playing in, in the solo buildings and, and, uh, and playing against the top, uh, top guys your age uh, from around the world. When I was younger, I kind of just, just uh, played the game because it was a lot of fun and I wasn't as serious as, as now, but now I kind of look at it on the, on the business side and, and uh, how I can make it uh, my job in the future and, and uh, it's uh, really exciting. Meanwhile, Tyler Lewington, a seventh round pick of the Washington Capitals, is doing his normal routine before game time. Oh, I definitely love the dub. I mean, I can't, can't imagine going anywhere, playing anywhere else. I think it's a great place to play. I mean, you grew up with the guys and the guys here become your family. It's like a second home and the billets and everything, you, you get everything taken care of. You got your schooling paid for after if you don't, can't go pro or don't go pro, stuff like that. So I think, I think the WHL is definitely a great route to go and I'm glad I went that way. And the fans, they come here every night and they cheer us on loud and it's definitely nice to see in the community around you, see them at the mall and people come up and they recognize you, stuff like that. So it's definitely kind of the thing in town to do on a Friday, Saturday night. So it's good to be a part of that. Bob Ridley is the Tigers play-by-play -play announcer and has done over 3,000 games. Oh yeah, he was also the team's bus driver for over 30 years. Actually, it started back in about 1972. Tigers decided to buy their own bus and they didn't have a bus driver, so they kind of put the cart before the horse and got the bus and looking around for a driver, they hired one and uh, he lasted, oh, probably a half a trip to going to Saskatoon. Got, uh, didn't want to do it anymore. And of course, uh, me being involved uh, on the farm and so on, uh, heavy equipment, I wasn't afraid to jump behind the wheel and just got on, on an interim basis and uh, uh, do some bus driving. So I did that, that one trip and they asked me if I wouldn't mind doing a little bit more until they found somebody else. Well, they never did and I did it for 42 years, so. As game time approaches, Lewington and Cox go through their game time rituals. And with the support of their billet, dinner is served just hours before the game. So yeah, who's, uh, who do you think is going to score the teddy bear toss tonight? Uh, I don't know, I think it could be either, either you or Sanford, or even Stevie. One of you guys, your line's been pretty, pretty hot for us this year. What about you? Uh, I think Alex Mowbray is going to score. Wow. Yeah, he's, just, uh, he's been hot lately, so. And after dinner, it's time to get dressed. Then right to the arena. But not before a quick stop to grab an iced tea for Lewington. Thought they didn't have them for a second. I was panicking. <laughs> Tonight's matchup is against the Kelowna Rockets, the top ranked team in the WHL. Okay, great focus in here, everybody ready to play our game. That's a group of five in all three zones. We race back together, we defend in the dice, okay, we get our clears. Neutral zone, we attack as a group of five with speed. In the offensive zone, we bust. Let's play our game. The game has another unique community element to it, as the teddy bear toss occurs once the first goal is scored. All the teddy bears will go to the Salvation Army, who will distribute them to families all over the region. Although Kelowna skates away with the victory, Medicine Hat shows that they can hang with the best teams in the CHL. This is a city whose love for their WHL club is only matched by their love for the game of hockey. Some say that Medicine Hat is an oil and gas city, but the reality is, it's Tiger Territory.
When we return, we'll sit down with Garrett Rank, a former OHL referee who's also one of Canada's top amateur golfers. While referee Garrett Rank might be a familiar name in hockey circles, his recognition in athletic circles doesn't stop there. Rank is also a scratch golfer who once represented Canada on the links. Without a doubt, hockey is the most popular sport in our great nation. There are 52 Canadian Hockey League teams and another seven NHL franchises connecting cities and cultures right across Canada. But hot on its heels is another swinging sport, golf. It may surprise you, but golf in Canada is nearly as big as the game of hockey. For hockey players, golf seems to be a natural fit for their lifestyle. The swing is similar to that of a slap shot, the game is played during most players' off-seasons, and for somebody who spends most of the year inside arenas, being outside under the sun for 18 holes is a great way to forget about the worries of pro hockey. For some, balancing both sports would be a dream job. For Garrett Rank, it's a reality. Like any young Canadian kid, I was a hockey player growing up and uh, you know, then started playing golf in the summer. It was a good babysitting tool for my parents to you know, just have me out of the golf course not getting into any trouble. And um, I went to school uh, to play golf and ended up walking on the hockey team. And uh, you know, then it was back to golf again. I was on a golf scholarship and gave up the hockey dream for that. And that's when I started officiating. And so now I'm kind of at the point where officiating is trying to take over from golf and uh, you know, trying to just balance both right now. There are several lessons from the game of golf that Rank has applied to refereeing hockey and vice versa. From the hockey side of things, I can draw, you know, take things away and use them in golf. And you know, from using golf things and, and taking to hockey, I think, you know, being able to just, uh, you know, move on and, and stay in the moment and stay present. Uh, you know, like I said before, if you make a bad call, you got to be able to, you know, get over it. Or if you hit a bad shot, you got to be able to move over away from that as well. Down the road, I still may turn professional. I haven't closed the door on that. I've, you know, I've got to see where I stack up and where my game's at. But, uh, you know, uh, I think that, uh, you know, you always have to play with with a carefree attitude. Rank's profile in Canadian golf is much higher than his on-ice fame. He lost in the final match of the 2012 U.S. Mid-Amateur Championship, an event in which the winner gains entry into golf's most prestigious event, the Masters. Meanwhile, this summer he'll tee it up in the RBC Canadian Open at Glen Abbey as the reigning Canadian Mid-Amateur Champion. You know, I've, I feel like I'm going to prepare for that this summer and that's kind of the, the big um, event of the year for me. and. Uh, you know, through the winter season, uh, you know, you're really busy throughout the week. And, uh, you know, this year I got to go to Texas for a couple of road trips. They've got some American Hockey League teams down there. So I took my golf clubs with me and I had two or three days off and went and played on those days. The news of a referee who can strike balls like Tiger Woods has apparently hit benches all over the AHL and NHL, with players letting Rank know they're on to a secret. Uh, I remember her, I can't remember who it was, but one guy for quirked up and said, just go work on your putting. And so it was, uh, it was pretty funny. And uh, when, when people yell at me or people start booing, I, kind of, I don't know why, but I kind of find it really funny and uh, it doesn't really get to me. <laughs> After the break, we'll chat with Ryan Johansson, Nick Foligno, and Jakob Voracek about their playing days in the CHL. Ryan Johansson made his name as a Portland Winterhawk before becoming a star with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Nick Foligno turned a hockey name into a first round selection with the Ottawa Senators before elevating his game with the Blue Coats. While Jakub Voracek was one of several first rounders to come out of Halifax and is now amongst one of the league's elite as a Philadelphia Flyer. All three were first time NHL All-Stars in January. They fire and score! Most people remember the 2010 NHL entry draft as Taylor versus Tyler, but the player selected fourth overall that year has developed into perhaps the best of the class, Ryan Johansson. A big, smooth skating center from Vancouver, the 22-year-old All-Star is now a cornerstone for the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's evolved into the team's most dangerous weapon on offense and is living up to the high potential he showcased over two seasons with the Western Hockey League's Portland Winterhawks. Look back at those two years, it's some of the best, uh, most fun I've had playing hockey. And, you know, really, it was just 
we had such a good group and uh, you know when our team was was playing so well we were just winning a lot. Of Johansson's time with the Winter Hawks was highlighted by a division title in 2011 and trip to the WHL final. He even parlayed his on-ice success into a spot on the silver medal winning World Junior Team. But off the ice was where the teenager had to grow up fast, moving more than five hours south and across the border to Oregon. Moving down to Portland and living in the U.S. is definitely different. You know, it's still, still something that, you know, I'm really thankful for and, and grateful for is, uh, you know, the Bill families that I had and how much they helped me. And it really is remarkable what they do for, you know, all of us young kids at the time and, you know, definitely still keep in touch with them. Johansson's teammate Nick Foligno also enjoyed a memorable living experience in the CHL, albeit with his parents and his coach. Nick spent three seasons playing for his dad Mike Foligno during his time with the Ontario Hockey League Sudbury Wolves. Foligno was one of the team's top players. That didn't earn him any special treatment at home. It was hard at first. My mom had to step in a few times. Uh, but you know what, I think, I think we, we just treated it as he was the coach at the rink and then at home he was my father. And he was great for, uh, you know, being able to kind of separate the two and allowing me to, you know, be a normal kid at home and, and not take it home with us. But uh, I think we had so many great memories because we treated it like that. And then uh, the organization was great that uh, it made my junior memories that much better. Foligno's stellar play ignited the town in 2007 as the Wolves marched all the way to the Ontario Hockey League final. Though his team came up short, the Ottawa Senators' first round pick knew the entire experience and set him up well for a future in the NHL. I think playing that many games and the travel, and uh, it prepared me for the NHL style just because you're used to playing, uh, you know, grueling type schedules and, uh, and the competition was great. A lot of guys, you know, especially in the league that I was in, a lot of guys graduated the NHL right away and uh, I think it allowed me to, to be able to make that transition uh, that much sooner and uh, I, I know my time in the CHL was really valuable for my development. Blue Jackets first round pick Jacob Voracek never expected he'd play in Canada as a teenager. Currently an all-star with the Philadelphia Flyers, the Czech Republic native was approached by his agent at 16, who convinced him the Canadian Hockey League was his best avenue to the NHL. A year later, the first pick in the 2006 CHL import draft was leaving home and headed for Halifax. It was kind of tough in the beginning, but uh, you know, I think it was harder on my parents because I'm a mama's boy. So uh, you know, my mom was struggling in the beginning, but uh, you know, I had a great billet. You know, my teammates were awesome. So uh, you know, like I said, I think uh, that was one of the one of the best two years of my life. Voracek adjusted just fine after landing with the Mooseheads. Not only did he win the Quebec League's Rookie of the Year award, but he started to learn English and how to play the North American style game. After leading the Mooseheads in scoring each of his two seasons, he graduated to the NHL, thankful his junior experience paid off. It helped me a lot. You know, every game in Halifax, there was something, something special. I mean, you are 17 years old and you're playing in front of 10,000 people. So, uh, you know, I came over and I think that was my best decision of my life. When we return, a look back at the 2007 MasterCard Memorial Cup, pitting the Medicine Hat Tigers against the Vancouver Giants. The 2007 MasterCard Memorial Cup was the second I've ever had the pleasure of calling. Medicine Hat won the Edge and Oath Cup that year in seven games, in double overtime, in the fog at Medicine Hat Arena. Their opponent was the Vancouver Giants. The two met again in Vancouver for the CHL title. Welcome to the championship final of the 89th Memorial Cup for just the second time. It's an all-Western Hockey League affair. Well, Vancouver doing a very good job right now, doing what they want to do, getting back behind that Medicine Hat Tigers defense and creating from below the goal line. Something they really failed to do in the 1-0 loss in the round robin finale on Wednesday. And in that game, you had to credit Madison Hat for the game it played, too. I don't think enough credit went that way for the job Willie Desjardins did. Huge hit involving Matt Lowry and Milan Lucic. Lucic, the big forward. Rabbit with Rabbit. Deflects off the defender. Excellent diving play coming back by Trevor Glass. Talk about the great speed for Helm and played such a great role on Canada's World Junior Team and that really started to open the eyes of not just the rest of the NHL for having let him slip to the fifth round but the rest of Canadian Junior Hockey as well. A 
great talent has created off the rush on a couple of occasions here today Peter and I know only, he only has one point to show for his effort so far in this tournament but for your money I know he's been the best Tiger in the event. Kendall McCardle Zealand had a chance rebound they score. Medicine High, you got to give them credit. They're a great team. They work really hard, but tonight we were very focused and determined, and we did what we needed to do to win. What was the game plan coming in? Just get on them quick. Uh, make it hard on our defense and make it hard on Keeley. We we got 38 shots on yet, and that showed why we win. Tell me about the plan for this game. You had an off day. Did the, you guys have to talk a lot? Did you watch video? How did you prepare? We just watched video of what we needed to do better. So we had five things we needed to do better and then we did them better and that's why we came out on top. Congratulations. Thank you. Your MVP, Milan Lucic. Another show in the books. Be sure to check us out again for another edition of This is the CHL. I'm Sam Cosentino.